Yeah. Back, maybe? Marco, <laughs> you are not here. You are not here. So what did we talk about? Do you think I remember? I think we were talking about this. We talked about uh, so what. Um, Exactly. So what is the sequence logo? It's representing the sequence, and then the size of the letters is related with its conservation, and or like which one is more conservation able to be? Uh, conservation, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, oh, well, yeah, the relative frequency is the well, is the so the relative frequency of course is, is the relative uh, fraction of it and the height is the conservation or entropy. This is a good match for conservation. Okay, so what can we do with the sequence logos? More than half, making pretty pictures. Can identify certain areas of a multiple sequence to show a high degree of conservation. We can yeah. find, you know, movies. Uh, maybe what part of the proteins are perhaps yeah, well, more conserved, and that leads to, in turn, an idea they might have some form of important, important structure or important function for the proteins. Yeah, so we could have done it for this kind of multi alignments. And actually, I guess that this sign down here in the bottom, one of these lines, is actually probably the entropy. Probably this. Uh, one of these modes. So that's the basic that's right. But, but, but so it's, it's a way to comp compress all this information down to and together with this one to make sense quite, quite visible. I mean, it's, it's quite useful. But uh, really, what we want to do is to actually learn something about these patterns. And one way to do it is to use machine learning. <laughs> and what is the machine? And how do we teach these things? So machine here means algorithm? Yeah. Or a computer, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And learning means the process of uh, showing this algorithm cases, so examples that are that you know uh, how to put into some classification and then make the uh, algorithm of the machine, figure out how to do it with new examples. Or additionally, you can give it more data and let it find out for itself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So basically, yeah, we want to classify things like that. It's probably. And you see here, if you look, for instance, if you want to look at different ways to do it, there are a lot of different methods that are somehow related. I think we talked about artificial neural networks. One minute, quick money away. Yeah. That looks like that, for instance. But also, the, there was a lot of other algorithms. I think we talked, we talked about support with machines. So. That basically tries to find a vector or a plane that separates two groups. And they do it by transformation, of, uh, you have multi dimensions, but they also do it by transformation of the data into by some kernel function. Um, one question regarding the difference between supervised and unsupervised yes. learning. Um, I mean, why would you do unsupervised learning? Because you always know. Right. So well, if you don't know, I mean, but, but certainly you, you could like try to figure out. I mean, somehow it's what we're talking about today, but it's not really. It's it's. it's uh, I mean, you, if you want just to group things together, you want to see are oh, there some patterns we can put together. I don't really have any biology, any good example. I know one example, even a paper. I think I was co-author of that, where we actually tried to use 
some unsupervised clustering of, of features of, of, of structures. So you could have, it could have been secondary structures, but it didn't have to be secondary structures. Maybe for some other feature it was better. And I don't really know what you, what feature got at the end because it was not so easy to analyze. But I will use that as a predictive tool for for making alignments later. So we may try to find proteins that had similar patterns of these features. That was, I mean, that basically was sim I mean, similar in the way that they actually clustered together. Which most likely was related to secondary structure somehow, but it didn't have to be. If if a machine had found something better pattern, or recognize it, they would have done that. So it was a mix of things. So I guess that's uh, one way you can do it, you really don't know, but um, let's see what uh, what Wikipedia says. Unsupervised. Yeah. Uh, data mining. So more, it's more if you want to explore through data analysis. So but really, if you have the data, you don't really know what to do, you want to basically cluster it, and somehow uh, it's not a good article. Uh, so, so, what happened now? So, I somehow went back. So you have clustering. So basically, you want to, can I get my data into groups? How many groups should I have it in? So K means clustering. Basically, means I want to group everything into K groups. And uh, uh, classical example is principal component analysis (PCA). So really, if you have very high dimensional data and you want to basically see what are the features that are important, you, you get a PCA and you get into one or two or three dimensions, and you say what, what is really is the major feature so that explains the difference in the data. So that is more if you if you don't really know, but so it's not so much made for predictive purposes, but it's more for analysis purposes. So certainly, if you, if you do PCA, if you have to say, say there are ten different experiments, and you want to see what what are really the uh, important facts here. Maybe, maybe actually five actually describe the same thing. So then PCA would co condense it down to the, all these five dimensions to one dimension because it would all be the same. So, you, so that, that 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 type of things. Okay. But in for, I have very rarely used it myself. So. So we talked about narrow networks. That book, something like this, um, uh, was inspired by a simplified picture of the brain or a simplified picture of uh, uh, neural networks and net networks and neurons. So, and you, we went through, I mean, basically, you have basically each node here. It's ca some kind of summation of every, all the inputs and in the previous and output, but often you have some kind of step function in there. It's not a linear summation, it's some, something else. I mean, often the idea of a step function or a linguistic number. These are, of course, a bit more smoother and not so drastic, so you might have some advantage for minimization as well. Mm -hmm. We talked about an example of the XOR function. And we talked a bit about support machines. So, so this is actually what I think you will use in the next course, people taking that one. Because it's a, it has some advantage over the neural networks. They're not as easy to overtrain. So we talked about overtraining. And uh, so o o overfitting. So you want to have something that is actually can generalize the inputs, but not, even if it's not doing perfect separation. So you don't want the green line, you want the black line normally. And we said about the training that you have to be often have a training set and a test set because you can always train something to recognize everything in the training set. It's just have enough parameters, but you don't want to. Well, unless there are two exact identical inputs that have different outputs, then of course you can't get it. But otherwise, basically, you can always, in theory, you can always get something that makes a perfect separation. And uh, so often, one way to do it is cross validation, divide this in different things, and this can be done from threefold to maybe. Well, you can do twofold, or you can do threefold, or you can do tenfold, or you can do actually one one training for each data point. Even we talked a bit about the uh, measures and uh, instead of MCC, so measures correlation coefficient, it's quite a good measure if you want to have separate uh, as a general measure 
Or people, other people use rock curves, particularly the area of the curve. <coughs> we talked about the encoding. Do you remember how you encode the amino acid sequence? Several ways. Yeah. Price matrix or you know some sort of physicalical property. Yeah. And the Zeros and a one. Exactly. So this, is, yeah, this, like is, this is the representation of a system. And then it has zero, one, and then eight and zeros. Or you can have some sort of physiochemical. So yeah. you can say that a system is this size and has this charge. So often you have somewhere between three and six different yeah. parameters. But then they are continuous somehow in numbers. And uh, surprisingly, somehow, at least for me, is that the spotting code seems very stupid, but it actually seems to work. It works in most cases quite well. And um, we talked a bit about target P as an example. So we have these nice loggers. We want to separate these type of groups from each other, but also from a background of nothing at all, or a background of all other problems. What is the like, group of these conservation? What, what's a sort of, is there some sort of limited protection for these things? Because, I mean, they aren't, you know, always super clearly separated, but obviously very, very important. So if you look at these single peptides, I mean, to an untrained eye, like the, you know, CTP um, targeting peptide there, maybe the valine and double alanine. Yeah. Or well, I guess we can look at the results, how well they do. I mean, this is more or less stated off. Mark is an expert in this, he knows this. Because he's trying to... So basically, what, how well do they do here? Um, I guess this is shift around, but basically you have for the mitoc for the sinopeptide first, we have 91% sensitivity, so we uh, find 91% of them, and we do with 90% specificity. So we have basically 90% of the ones we find are correct, 91% are all the ones that we should find or we find. If you look at uh, the others, it's slightly worse. It's like 85. We have sensitivity of like 82 to 85%. So like so it's still like a, yeah, it's up to one sixth something that are, that are wrong. So it's quite a lot of wrongs, and uh, particularly chloroplast. Oh, well, it seems like about ninety six. This shift the, the chloroplast seems to be uh, the most difficult one to find because you only find seventy percent of them. Yeah. So that that's yeah. So the, yeah, as I said, yeah, chloroplast is, is most difficult, and um, well, the other is not. Also, a bit, bit, bit confusion. But I meant if we just look at a, a multi sequence alignment, what could be sort of is there any some sort of general it's like the limit of what is, you know, known to be conserved or something. Because I mean in some cases you really see it like here you have like like in the Tata book, you have a giant egg. Yeah, yeah. In some cases it's a bit I mean so basically from a logo you mean, yeah. No. I mean certainly of course uh, Anything that's bigger than a series for significantly uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot random, but certainly if you have Half a bit to score or something that you're getting close to the random nervous stuff. But uh, multiple six lines really depends on how m remote ho homologs you include. So if you include the only the close ones, everything will be four bits. And but if you remove, so if you really take everything and find the side last, if you have a method that finds more distant homologs, so you can actually have fine uh, less things. But my guess is that things that are down here, like less than half a bit, it's quite useless. So it's really the ones that are close to one, one bit that are useful. Um, and also, you never see it exactly. Uh, it probably is some statistical measure that I don't know. But you can, see, you can see here, there's no reason to believe that there should be any signal after, this, after the cleavage site. Because that's where the protein starts. And uh, so clearly, here you are on the order of 0 0.2, 0 0.3 bits. This seems to be a bit higher, but I guess that's for some other reasons. I don't know why I hide it, but it's maybe it's just because it's a shift or maybe some misalignment, something that I'm not there. Something. But clearly, if you have less than half a bit, you, I think, does nothing. So it's clearly, mitochondria, you, I mean, you would say that uh, more than half a bit is basically these two arginines, these AS. And then it also for the depends on a little bit what, what you have here. If it was, I mean, here you see it's not, not one amino acid, but it's a, group of amino acids that are all hydrophobic in this case. So that Regarding this SVM, in the practical we saw that when you change the function that you're using to 
separate the two groups. It is, so if you choose proximal linear function, it does it quite well, and then if you choose something else, a uh, polynomial or exponential or something like that, it, will, it goes worse. And then, why is this? Because they have... In general, that is probably just because you don't find optimal function. Because in principle, the other ones should be... It's... I mean, it probably, in the training set, it should do as well, at least. But in test set, it's basic because of overfitting. So really, you, you, you optimize too much on your training data. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably it's not also a very big data set, so that's, that's the reason. So, so, basically, so basically, yeah, it's, it's an overfitting. You have too many variables that are free, and you just learn too much about it, so you can't generalize. In the training set, if you don't, if you don't optimize, there are cases where you can't train it, really, but that's often depending on that you... Basically, it's my, you don't converge in the training, so that, that, that's uh, more of an algorithmic problem than really uh, any fundamental reason. It's more like you, if you spend more time, more computer, or better minimization method, you could find it. But that was also, I mean, it, so we have, of course, so one fact is training time is uh, much longer with the non-linear kernels. So it could, could be a problem also. I don't, I don't remember exactly what you did, what, what data set you had. Mm, I'm not sure. I mean, you notice for one of the kernels that it took significantly longer. Yeah. Than I mean, these RBF kernels are often very good, but they, they take forever, yeah. often. So we, we have many cases where actually, yeah, I mean, there are cases we can't use it. Yeah. And in signal B, there are these scores, the B is for S score, Y score, and are these used with? So are they? Is there a distribution for this? So the signal P is. Uh, I didn't talk about it here, but basically that is. So basically they have two networks, if I remember correctly. So one network is trained to recognize the signal peptide. So it, it has should have output that is one 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 zero zero zero. Then it has another network I think is called the C score C network that is basically just trained to recognize the cleavage site. So basically the position where the signal peptide is cleaved off. And then I think there has a Y score, which is the combination... Between C and S. Yeah, and then, then it takes the S score before the position and, and the S score. So average S score, 10 residues before and 10 residues after a certain position or something, something like that. And then, and then the uh, final score is something I call D score or something like that. Yeah, and that is basically... I think it's the average of the S score compared to the Y score or something like that. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, the average of the S score and the maximum Y score or something like that. Yeah, it's something like that. But the question is, so they're, they're using the threshold and they say afterwards if it is, yes, it is a signal yeah. there or not. But is the threshold also in fact from machine learning techniques or is it a statistical thing? It's just uh, basically, I mean, the, the numbers of us, I mean, they didn't know this. They have, I don't think they have optimized it. Just say that this is good to actually really maximize it for to get best performance. But because, I mean, if, so for each of these I mean, scores, you, you could have a distribution of sure. probability or something. Yeah. Do so they, 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 I think they just basically scan the score and say, this is where we have the separation we want to have. So in, in this case, I think they probably want to be a bit conservative. So they want to not say too many false positives. They put a threshold that just fits the false positive rate they want to have. So there is no significance level or anything like well, that? Well, you probably could could do that, but they, they haven't. I mean, you could certainly do that. You certainly could have, uh, I mean, but I don't think they have, I mean, you could just fit it to observation, basically. You could, you, could, you could calculate it from your data set. But, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, that's what I mean, calculate the distribution of the score, yeah. and then, and then you, you, you could do that. Uh, uh, you could basically, uh, sure, you may, if you, you basically, if you have a calculation of, I mean, this is your distribution of scores for the uh, signal peptides, and this is the distribution of scores for your non signal peptides. Of course, if you know, if you are here, you know that you have, uh, I mean, if you're here, you have 100% chance to be correct. If you're here, you have 95% chance to be correct. I mean, yeah, but it's just observation. But uh, they don't report it. Often, what they do report is, I don't remember exactly signal P actually, but it's something like a number here, it's like 0 to 10. This is kind of reliability. So basically, that is basically something like that. So basically, and in this case, I think in this case here, this is just it's calculated for the difference between the highest and second highest number here. It's basically, it's basically or something like that. Um, so you have a distribution of say four networks. You take the difference between the biggest and the second biggest, and that's basically that's your 
how likely you are to be correct. So if that is big separation, you're likely to be correct. If it's small separation, you're more likely. Yeah. I mean, you also can guess or something, but it's less related. I mean, because it will be so easy to do, and it looks like our well, the thing is, like, the data sets are not. Yeah, sure, you can do it, but it, I don't think you really could go out to real probability because the data set is not that big and it's certainly not unbiased. So it, I don't think they want to be. I mean, they have often you put, I think one to ten is probably enough. But I still, it is much better than put a threshold like this, yeah, like yeah, a solid. Yeah, sure, 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 it could be. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what people. I think. It's, what people want. I think they, they really want to know. These are the list of proteins. I mean, you, 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 should, uh, sorry, uh, you might be some option, you can choose it yourself, even. I don't know, I don't remember. But uh, basically, you, in many cases, people just want a list and then they don't care more. But it's certainly, you, you, it's interesting to have the 100% certain list or the 100% sorry, not to miss anything list, and that they, they are different. But, it's, but these are normal reliability scores somehow, and, uh, and they are, I think they, are, they don't want to do more detail because the data sets are small. I mean, you have a few hundred, a few, and it's sort of unbiased. They don't, they don't really want to put a, put the real number there for that reason. I think it's, it's more that they don't really trust the number so much. It is my guess. So I mean, what, because what I was saying is could be that the distribution of the of probability of the scores is not good to do any of this. So it is weird somehow, or it doesn't behave like. It probably it might be that it's I mean it's it is something there, but it might not be that. I, mean, I think there are. I honestly don't think you really trust it that much. You can really do it. I think you just and it's also. I think that's the reason. But uh, yeah, but principally you should. I agree. And but it, probably because of small data sets, it's not really done all the time. But I, I, it's yeah. I mean, you don't you don't have a statistical model. I don't really think if there is a way to describe it. I think it's, you need to do an observation. Else, that's the only way. I mean, you could generate artificially random peptides or hypothetical peptides and just see how. Yeah, but that's only well. But the random peptide is probably something that. I mean, yeah, yeah, you, 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 but, but that is probably, the, yeah, well, well you, you could, but, but you certainly you don't know what, you need to know how, what the signal really should look like. You need what, what the probability are fine also. So it's not just, all right, okay, what, what, what's probably the generated random? It's, it's going to be extremely low, probably, because, but, you, but there are going to be maybe cases where you're, so you, so that is probably going to be no, well, I think you do. I think even that would be you would be afraid of bringing too many false positives in that case. I think because it's really well, if you look at this, the, probably the generate is at random. It's extremely low. I mean, you have to have all these. I mean, this is a, so let's ten to minus. I don't know, hundred or something. So that's going to happen. But really, but you want to. But the thing is that there are probably a few of these that are borderline lots of cases. That, I mean, there are, there are errors in annotations, etc. Et 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 so I guess, I mean, theory, I guess we could, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's, yeah, randomness in the in amino acid sequence is not always, <coughs> there are correlations you see there, I think that's they're not, not always trivial. I mean, you can do it, but it's not always that it's really represented, the real value. Okay, any more? Should we go on then? Mm. Talk about. Uh, let me just stop this recording. Yeah. Stop recording.